great color begins before post-processing, starting with acquisition and carrying through pre-processing. For monochrome cameras, the RGB ratio must be correct. Many factors affect this. The sensitivity of a chip to a given wavelength of light, the filters you use, the conditions of the atmosphere, and your target's placement in the sky. Be certain of manufacturer's suggested ratios. Consider G2V star calibration and read up on atmospheric extinctions effect on blue. Users of Bayer matrix cameras have it somewhat easier, but they are reliant on good debayering routines and proper settings such as XY offsets. Be sure to get all of this right so that post-processing results are accurate and as beautiful as they can be. Time was monochrome users shot 2x2 two two binned color as explained in Intermediate Part 1, Number 1. Chrominance was treated purely as a low-resolution wash of color, but things have changed. Many elite imagers now shoot one by one unbinned color, spending a great deal of time processing it before adding the finishing touch of luminance. There is structure to be revealed in chrominance, which luminance can't always make up for. And since we'll see some terrific new ways of boosting saturation, keeping up with luminance using the extra signal of 2x2 two two binning isn't as important. You may wish to consider shooting unbinned color only, utilizing a pseudo-luminance. I've seen significant disparity in the way different pre-processing programs perform trichromic combines of R, G, and B masters. RGB combined in CCD stack tends to be red shifted, while Astro Art tends to be green shifted. Maxim DL is somewhere in the middle. For this reason, combining R, G, and B masters might be best saved for Photoshop. Wherever you combine, we'll return to our old friends, Photoshop's histogram and InfoTab to set things straight. Next up, the two Bs, bias and balance.